you're um you're a pundit, aren't you? On BBC Four. I could be offended by that. Really? Um yeah, they, they asked me to come along to the concerts and an occasion talk. Right. So you're not actually, so officially you're not a pundit, you're, you're a, how do they refer to you? They the call boss? me, um, well when I first used to come on this, say uh, this is the cellist Philip Shepherd, and now they started calling me the composer and cellist Philip Shepherd, because I'm sort of a jack of a few trades. Because you've done famous things, haven't you? You've done, I read today, I did some research, that you wrote the music for the Olympic ceremony, didn't you? Yeah. Is that uh, right? Yeah, this time last year I was, um, uh, sort of sweating in Beijing and working on the closing ceremony for the handover to London 2012 which involved um, also rewriting the national anthem which was quite good fun and also uh, producing the, the music with, with uh, Jimmy Page and Leona Lewis. But you is, is composition uh, a really, uh, as a composer, is that not a really stressful thing to do? You're, you're given a commission to do mm. and then you put it together the way you think it should be yeah. and then it gets performed. I mean, isn't that a really risky thing as a, as a creator? No, I don't think so. I mean, people say, well, it must be very tough. It's not. You just, but when you're writing music, you're just playing games against yourself, really. And it's a meritocratic thing. If something's good, people will like it. If it isn't any good, you shouldn't have written it like that. I mean, it's funny when I suppose a lot of my work is in the more commercial sector. I would say, in as so much as so you're writing to a brief. Right? I'm often writing to a brief, and if if someone doesn't like what I've done, then they won't pay me. Right. Um, and I sit, but I'd still say that I write music that I would like to have on in the car. Uh, it's quite interesting then coming to the proms. I come very much from a hardcore contemporary music background. I was a player in the London Sinfonietta for quite a number of years, and my string quartet worked with a lot of the composers who. You know, who are represented here, and it's there's sometimes a, a, a dichotomy between the two worlds. There is, a, is something of a schism, which there shouldn't be, because if, if music's good, then people should demand that they want to hear it. If it isn't any good, why are you writing it? Now, and a lot, the problem I have is that a lot of composers write about themselves. I'm not hugely interested in myself. I don't I find myself remotely. I'm sure you're fascinated. No, I don't think I am. You I wouldn't like to spend much time with me. No, believe me, you wouldn't want to. I've lived with myself all my life. It's a terrible place to be. Yes. Um, so I'd rather might write music about, about other things and about other situations and try and remove myself from the equation. I think that's sort of the difference between some of the commercial world and some of the more ivory tower. Is that, is that why you think large numbers of people are scared off by commissions and problems or commissions? Yeah. Because they just think, oh. Yeah, because I think sometimes that the context in which they're presented is is one that is extremely intimidating. I, I, I find contemporary music concerts intimidating. I've given plenty of them, but there are many that I wouldn't have gone to myself. Did you I, find them? Did you think when you were giving them, mm. did you think that they were that they were intimidating? Or were you thinking, yeah. no, this is absolutely fantastic? Well, sometimes a piece is amazingly enjoyable to play, but you wouldn't want to listen to it. Right. <coughs> Very honest. No, it's true. Uh, and you know, why why lie about that? That's that is absolutely the case with with, with some music. Concerto, Chin, Concerto. Yep. It's a world premiere. It is. BBC Commission. Yeah. Um, you've heard bits of it. Yeah. I've heard extracts of it so right. so far. What, what can you tell me? Uh, I'm I'm well. I'm very excited to hear the rest of it because I mean, what I've heard has been more from the chalice point of view. I've had the score for a, a couple of weeks and I've gone through some of it myself. It's very flattering to the player. Um, to the cellists themselves, in as much as when it gets extremely technical, it goes off into areas of improvisation, which I think is a great thing to do. It, sometimes with this style of contemporary music, it's over prescribed in the solo parts to the point when you have to do everything very prescriptively. It is a very prescriptive piece, but that's because she's a sort of master orchestrator, um, and therefore everything has been planned and mixed, if you like, in the score before it's been played out. It's like the Ravel in that way, the, the piece comes ready mixed. If you play exactly what's in the score, it's stunning. I think if the piece works tonight, it's because it's being played brilliantly. If it doesn't work, it might be down to lack of rehearsal. I don't know how much rehearsal it's had, so I'm hoping it's the former, not the latter. But I think the piece stands a very good chance of going down very well tonight. What I would say is, let's decide on how good it is by the third or fourth performance. Okay. okay. Right, well that's thrown um, in as in much as... We're obviously going to have to go along to three more performances of it. No, what I'd say is, is if it's... People should, if it's a great piece, if it makes a great impression tonight, I hope that people would write in and say they want to hear it again. My problem with it is I can't download it off iTunes if I like it. I can watch it any other service. I, can't, <laughs> I can watch it, sure, on a website, but it's there for a limited amount of time. And my problem with actually the classical world is that if something's going to take off, 
it's slightly hindered at the beginning and I would love it for it for the composer to say here's the sheet music here's the mp3 of it if you want to buy it, it's coming out next year but meanwhile put this on in your car if you like it that's, that's how I think. That, well that's that's interesting but then that really is that isn't that really down to so going into a different area which is fascinating but isn't that down to the composer and the performer sorting out this issue to do with rights? Because it's about rights. It's nothing to do with the player, apart from yeah, the I player. I mean, to a certain extent, I guess, though, isn't it? Because no, they would have rights. already no, they would have already signed signed off on them. It, largely, I would have thought in a concert like this, because the BBC are already recording it and broadcasting it. It's no, it's it's more a case of, of I I would always say with a piece like this, it's better to have heard it on the way to the concert already. Like I was saying before, if I've heard something in rehearsal, I enjoy it a huge amount more because I'm, I'm hearing beyond the architecture, I'm actually hearing the, the substance and the, and the, and the flavour of the piece rather than the bricks and the mortar of it. And I think that's the same with a lot of music. By the third listen, you might well be hooked. By the first, it's very hard to give a spontaneous gut reaction to it, unless it's very loud or very shocking or very seductive or very sweet. You should be on the <laughs> I don't think I should, actually. <laughs> really good at that. <laughs>